Welcome to BCEPA Structural Politics Working Group interview series. It's a pleasure to have Professor Lenny Hansen, whose work has been influential in debates and discussions around foreign policy, security, and feminist approaches in IR to talk to as part of our interview series at BSUP GPWG. My name is Kodili Chikuma, and I'm a, a PhD candidate in politics at the University of East Anglia. Lenny Hansen is Professor of International Relations in the Politics Science, Political Science Department at the University of Copenhagen. She has made important contributions to post-structuralist, feminist and constructivist IR theory. She's best known for her critique of the absence of gender within the Copenhagen School of Security Studies. She has co-authored or authored several books, including Security as Practice, Discuss Analysis and the Bosnian War. This was published in 2006. The Evolution of International Security Studies, which was published in 2000 and, uh, 2009, which she co-authored with Barry Buzan. Recently, she has been working on the role of images in world politics. Professor Hansen, thank you for agreeing to speak to us today. Uh, today's discussion centers around security, visuals and icon denial and sovereignty. Uh, but before we get to that, uh, Professor Hansen, can you remember when you first became aware of post structuralism as a specific approach to IR? And can you also situate your own work within post structuralist approaches or post structural approaches in IR? I think this would be useful uh, for post uh, postgraduate students, uh, including PhD candidates and uh, early career researchers as well. So can you can you think about the first time you became aware of this approaches of this approach, and also can you situate your own work uh, within the structural approaches in IR? Thank you so much, uh, first of all, for inviting me to be part of this uh, interview. Uh, it's a great privilege, and and I've been looking forward to it very much. Um, and uh, I I. I remember very vividly the first time that I encountered post-structuralist uh, IR a theory. Uh, I was a student, I was a third year student at the University of Copenhagen. It was in the fall of 1990. And there was a, an external lecturer who was giving uh, a course uh, called French Philosophy and International Relations Theory. And, you know, at that young lecturer was Ola Weaver. Uh, who is now, of course, you know, a very famous IR uh, scholar. And, and uh, I think we started out being like 60 or 70 students. Uh, and by the, by the end of the semester, I think we were down to maybe 12 or 15. Uh, so it was a very, very exciting course, but it was also really difficult. <laughs> and I think that it was also, it was difficult for a number of reasons. I think one thing, which is simply to recognize, and I think that is still the case, that post-structuralist theory, you know, requires quite, you know, a lot of study and attention um, uh, to order really get, you know, on, on, on the inside of what kind of a theorization that, you know, that this is. Uh, I think it was made uh, also uh, challenging by the fact that when I took that course, there was very little international relations theory being taught in Copenhagen. So I actually hadn't really read much international relations theory. So I read, a, you know, RBJ Walker, Michael Shapiro, James Dadarian, uh, before I read Kenneth Waltz. Uh, and, uh, and a lot of the, of the early post-structuralist work was also sort of a critical engagement with the field of international relations and particularly with neorealism. So you could say, in a sense, I was reading the critique before I read the text that actually were critiqued. Uh, and in a sense, you can say that that's a very post-structuralist way of arriving at it. <laughs> that you start with, you know, reading, reading the text about the text rather than reading, you know, the text itself. Um, I think also that it was also a, a challenging, uh, a challenging place to start. Uh, because in 1990, um, there wasn't that much post-structuralist IR theory uh, or analysis that had been developed uh, at that point. So this meant that there were, you know, there were no introductions, there were no introductory textbook chapters uh, that, uh, that you could read uh, to, to sort of ease your way, uh, your way into post-structuralism. So we were reading, you know, text by, you know, by Walker and Ashley and James Dadarian and Michael Shapiro's International Intertextual Relations had just been published. 
Um, so, so I remember it really, really clearly, and and uh, I remember it being difficult, uh, but I also remember it being, you know, incredibly. Uh, exciting and and I think in in, in terms of, of what you were asking about how I would situate my own work I think in a lot of ways that you know my own work continued along some of the main lines that were already presented you know back in that course uh, and and I think which is really about the politics of representation you know the title of Michael Shapiro's uh, first book or not his first book but but one book that was really influential in terms of putting this kind of of work into IR I think that it is about the way in which that, you know, language discourse makes particular policies possible and at the same time make other policies not possible. So you could say, you know, as part of that theorization, you know, it's also to look at the way in which that, you know, subjectivities, that the possibilities for different identities and different representations to be argued, that they're put forth in discourse. So I think one of the things there that was, you know, that I also took away from, you know, from that very first course was the, the way in which that language both enable, but that it also disciplines and that it also makes, you know, certain things not possible. And in that sense, uh, it's, it's also a way of understanding discourse where, you know, language, you're at the same time working at the level of language and discourse. But at the same time, you're also looking at what it is that's not made possible, right? So, so language in that sense is also, you know, a set of power relations. And, and because it's a set of power relations, we also need to engage with it critically. And I think that that sort of critical, you know, approach to discourse and to language, I think is terribly important. And I think one of the things that, you know, at least I've, I've, I've tried to, you know, keep at the center uh, of, of, of the post-structuralist work that I have, that I have done in, uh, as well. I think if I can say one thing to uh, also to when I first encountered uh, post-structuralism, um, because I do think that, I mean, it, 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 it's, it's a great question, both in terms of contextualizing, you know, where we're coming from. Um, but I think also there is also something about how, I think when you're, you know, when you're a student or when you're doing your PhD, that it also, you know, can come to form. You, you, you know, kind of engagement, both theoretically, but also, you know, empirically. And, you know, in the fall of 1990, I mean, this was when, it, 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 you know, the confrontation uh, between the US and Iraq over Kuwait was gearing up and you had the first Gulf War uh, in January of 91. You know, you'd had the fall of the, of the Berlin Wall. You were seeing the disintegration of the Soviet Union. Uh, you know, a couple of years later in 92, you know, you had the Maastricht Treaty and the formation of the European Union. You know, you had the wars in the former Yugoslavia, which were very important, both in terms of, you know, European security politics, but also I think for a, a, a lot of us who were working on security, you, you know, discourses and post-structuralism and so on in the 90s. You know, so, you, you know, I wrote my PhD on the Western debates on the Bosnian war, which sort of I continued working on also in security as practice, but questions of migration, you know, were also related both to, you know, to the European Union and, you know, sort of the transformation of, of borders within the EU. Uh, and they're also related to, you know, to the refugees and the migrations that were coming, particularly from the former Yugoslavia. So I think in, 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 in that sense, it was also sort of a time where a lot of things were happening in international politics uh, and in international relations. And I think you could argue that, you know, isn't that always the case? <laughs> but, 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 but I think at least we were sort of, you know, me and my, and my sort of cohort of students were, were sort of feeling like, you know, we're really, you know, we're really here. You know, we're, we're studying at a moment in time where, in, in, you know, the Warsaw Pact is falling apart. You know, the Soviet Union is falling apart. So, so there was sort of a sense uh, that, that this was something, there was something fundamental changing and that there was something that was important to be a, a, a part of. And I think if I could say also, because I think it's hard, it's hard to know, you know, kind of looking back, you know, you kind of tend to construct much more kind of coherent narratives than might actually be you know, legitimately the case. But I think if I look at, you know, the fact that this course was taking place, 
uh, at this time. Um, it also, you, you know, sort of became a way for us, you know, to connect theories and things that were happening in the world. Uh, and I think at least for me, if I'm looking at the way that I have mostly worked, it, it has always been through, you, you know, connecting theories with something that is happening. And, and usually with something that's happening in the present or something that happened, you know, in that was the present when I started, you know, working, uh, working on it. Uh, and I think that that sort of, that sort of, you, you know, interface between, I wouldn't say case studies, I think that that's kind of minimizing the way of, of, of working, you know, with stuff that happens, but, but working with something that is not only theoretically, uh, theoretical and abstract, but something actually, you know, seeing what difference it does to have a, in this case, post-structuralist theoretical lens onto things that happen in the world, I think has been important. Um, so that sort of, and I think also if, and the final thing that I, that I, that I would say about, about that sort of starting point and, and encountering post-structuralism, and I think also is one that sort of, you know, has informed my own way of thinking about this, is that this was a time when post-structuralism came into IR, where a number of the key texts uh, were very much politically engaged, right? So if you're, if you're reading, you know, David Campbell's writing Security from 1992, you know, it is really an engagement with, you know, American security discourses and, and also, you know, sort of the, the sort of the, the book almost, even though it's published in 92, was very engaged with the second Cold War. And, and I think that, that that early, you know, that early generation of po first generation of post-structuralist work and Olive Evers also was very much concerned with finding a way to, you know, open up political critical space between, you know, East and West, between the dichotomies of the free, of the free world and the evil empire and so on. I mean, there was a very kind of both politically and, and, and discursively, it was a very dichotomous binary, you know, both political arena, but also, you know, discourse. And, and I think that that sort of, that that sort of need to make a critical political impact, you know, was important. Uh, and I think that that was one of the things that was sort of, I mean, there were a lot of things that were kind of mistaken in the critiques of post-structuralism uh, from, I think, some sort of mainstream IR approaches when post-structuralism first appeared. But I think one of, one of the things that I really wanted to take issue with was a sort of critique that post-structuralism was all kind of philosophizing uh, and, not, uh, and not being engaged with politics. I mean, it's always been and continues to be, you know, a very kind of political uh, a, theory in, in, in that sort of engagement with, uh, with politics. Thank you. Thank you, Lene. That's all, that's all very interesting. I mean, just thinking about it, I remember if this really helps, uh, just from uh, picking up from your point, uh, that post structuralism requires a lot of study and a lot, a lot of attention to it. Uh, it took me about 12 months to write my theory chapter. <laughs> right. <laughs> After a really, really long time. Because I, I came to post structuralist approaches from the traditional constructivist approaches, uh, I went through Wendt and all of that, and you know, finally uh, moving to us or edging to us post structuralism, and it took uh, a really long time. But also, just um, some of the things you mentioned about um, during the time yeah, you were kind of uh, getting introduced to this, this, uh, this the text and the approaches and the ideas, right? Uh, there wasn't much work about. Or that simplified what the structural or what the structuralism was all about, but also thinking about the event happening at that time and seeing how theory actually connects to practice, mm -hmm. and just bringing all of this together uh, in your work, particularly in security as practice, you've tried to address some of the criticisms against the structural approaches in IR, including the absence of a causal epistemology, uh, which you. Uh, sort of mentioned a bit, as well as methodolo methodological questions around validity and, and reliability amongst others. But apart from these criticisms against uh, post-structuralism, you've also, in your work, tried to discuss some of the uh, some of the debates within happening within post-structuralism itself, right, uh, and security as practice as well, 
uh, you expanded on the notion of difference or, or otherness, multiple otherness, which kind of extends, uh, for example, Campbell's uh, discussion in security as practice. Uh, so what do you see as the contribution of, of structural approaches to OER? What, what, is the, what, what, what does it offer that, for example, the main IR theories uh, does not really uh, help us see what does post-structuralist approaches help us do uh, in IR? Well, I think, I mean, for me, I think, I think that the post-structuralism is, you know, is, is, is a broad approach. Uh, and, and your first question about, you know, what my contribution is, I think also kind of that, that there are also people who've been working, you know, more with, you know, psychoanalytical traditions, you know, bringing in Lacan and Shishek, for example. Uh, so I think that there are multiple post-structuralism. It's just, I think that's important uh, to say to say as well. Uh, so I think if I can sort of see the contribution to a post-structuralist uh, approaches to IR in terms of, of, of you know, where my own work is located. Uh, I really sort of do want to sort of return to, to you, you know, to critical engagement with the politics of representation um, and, and how important that that, that that is. So I think at least to me, I think post-structuralism is the approach in IR that really focuses critically on discourse. And, and I think it's a sort of, it's both, so it's both the, the, the analysis of the way in which that representations are made in language, but it's also, you know, the way in which that those representations are connected, you know, to foreign and security policies. And by foreign policies also here, you know, I would sort of go along with, with, with David Campbell's, uh, you know, theorization of that in, in writing security, that foreign policy, there's foreign policy with capital letters, uh, and then there are foreign policies with, you know, with small letters, and and that foreign policy here is broader. You know, it's it's with the small, uh, it's with the small uh, letters. So, and I think that that sort of, you, you know, the relationship between, you, you know, discourse and and what policies are being, you, you know, made possible, you know, legitimated, and so on. I think I think that for, for, to me is 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 a really significant uh, significant contribution. All right, thank you, thank you.